Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, where I'm always happy to introduce the top tier Terran in the top left in the blue. From Team Liquid, the kid. It's Clem. Up against the player who gave him that nickname, despite being a bit younger himself, the fastest player in the world. It's the Italian Stallion. It's Rainer. In a best of five, Terran versus Zerg showdown yet again. Yes, the kid's table is back on the menu. We're not expecting the surgical uh, precision of Sarah, the masterful macro of Cure. But if what you're expecting is a, a bloodthirsty brawl, a back and forth between two top tier StarCraft geniuses, well, the YouTube comment section is below. Right after you like and subscribe. And Jimmy, what are we? What? 1,250. Seven likes on this video, on this cast. Well, and uh, I'll cast another series. And I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And Clem versus Rainer always makes it a little bit better. But this is the first major series between them since they both had what I'd probably consider a, a less than ideal performance at I Am Katowice. Clem ends up going down to Cyril quite decisively. No shame in that, but also was hoping to probably do better than the round of eight coming off his, his victory uh, in Atlanta. And Raynor going out in the group stage was clearly a, a disappointment as he was definitely in the list of those you might see in the final rounds. So, both of them back and the stakes might not be quite as high. The mistakes might still be made, but I'll stake my reputation on a fun back and forth series. You wrapped it up there nicely, but um, starting things off to the game. The Reaper flirting with the Queens. The Queens, not amused, but also incapable of doing anything about it. A Roach Warren behind, quite conspicuous. Bounces one, really? Bounces the Queen out of the way and just goes for it. Into the mineral line. Suspecting no Zer- Oh my god, it's a disaster! Oh, Rainer getting roasted right now. I, and he gets out at the Hellion to add insult to grievous incinerating injury. Um, wow. So, Clem saw a Roach Warren out of Rainer. And instead of being intimidated, what he did was say, you're probably not building too many lengths, because usually you build 6 to 10, maybe 12 lengths and you're going to get Zergling speed. But Raynor got a bit greedy, and he didn't have Ling speed, clearly. Uh, so that means Clem gambled a bit. There still could have been Lings, just it's not guaranteed to do damage. But he ends up getting a huge return on investment. You should not be killing nine drones with anything in the first five minutes of the game, let alone a couple Hellions and a Reaper, which uh, are more often standard than not. So, Raynor in a tough spot to kick things off in game one, whereas Clem can do pretty much whatever he wants. Which includes, apparently, roasting queens by the open fire. The roaches will get a tiny bit of revenge. And, uh, well, cloak behind for banshees. Clem playing it safe. And the the queen count... Okay, there's seven queens. All right, they, they, they produce quickly. But seven queens out on the map. I was, I was going to say, with the queen count low, and, and generally Rainer being... No, he's focused on the queens, making sure no further damage can be done. In fact, the Banshee. Uh, Why are they allowed to fly, Karen? I don't... Why are you asking me? I don't know. <clears throat> The Banshee will poke and prod at the hatchery for a while, waiting. Another Banshee comes in, that one uh, also taking a similar amount of damage out of Solidarity. So the Banshee's unlikely to be getting too much done past this. But the Hellions sneaking in toward the third base as well. Get seven more drones. Rainer cut back down under 60. Oh no. Well... Queen taken out, and that means the, the drones are now vulnerable, though 
so much damage has been done to the Banshees. It is a bit of a risk here. Overall, it's just been Clem bullying uh, Rainer throughout this game so far. And, and the longer this goes on, the more likely it will continue. As the longer it takes Rainer to stabilize on anything resembling Lair Tech, the longer Clem is able to get his production up. He's walled off his siege tank there. One of us. One. <clears throat> How does he get rid of it? Okay, place your guesses. How does he fix this? Does he come with a, a medevac to unload it? Does he just pretend he does? Mm. But that is not a permanent. Oh my God, it's the dumbest, but also most permanent solution. He is going to block off the location instead of even bothering. He's going to block off the location where the tank could potential. Is that going to work? Oh my God, it pops out on the far side of the barracks. What is this magic? I don't know how far you could push that, but apparently that far. So he, he's removed the area the siege tank could spawn out of the factory. And somehow it just ends up spawning over the top of the racks, which is some real Terran geometry magic there. Um, but wow. Mm. Feels like it's more of a Bronze League hero solution than a best Terran player in the world solution. But get off my cre- Okay, the Queen's not exactly quickly flanking those medevacs, but if Clem wasn't paying attention, which, yes, a big if, uh, would have been a, a potentially devastating pickoff. Something Rainer... Well, Rainer, he's recovered. He's still struggling if you look at the upgrades. 1-1 one, one just now finishing. Whereas Clem is already well on his way to 2-2. Two, two. Three more bears. Going to bring him up to 8, which is full 3 going on 4 base production. Rainer has not yet started a hive, though he has finished an infestation pit. So, overall... Uh, I would say Clem looking very solid, but these are not units that can close out the game easily. He still has to get the damage done with the drops. Rainer moving in to defend. He's already started the hive. It's just Queens up against the upgraded Marines, which is an unfortunate matchup that isn't very fair to them. And again, rarely do they get a nice one. One Queen eating the damage from the siege tanks. Marines into the main. I'm going to chase it down, but... So now Clem is just buying time until he can put together a solid tank push for 2-2. Or really, whatever he has, uh, Widow Mines or otherwise. With those 2-2 upgrades, he's almost certainly... I, I guarantee you Clem was checking the upgrades out of Raynor. And since those Terran and Zerg upgrades take the exact same amount of time, he's able to tell he will have an advantage with 2-2. Even if Rainer's on the ball. And unfortunately for him, uh, not quite. Corrosive Biles not actually hitting onto the Widow Mines. Some of them will burrow forward. Widow Mines not incredible against Roach Ravager, but they certainly don't hurt if there's not detection. More Marines coming in. Zirkling counterattack, finding some of the SCVs, but Marines getting even more on the other side. Banshee's back at home. They didn't get much damage, but they're able to cut through. Corrosive miles and energy almost entirely gone on the medevacs, but they're still able to pick up and head towards the main. The revolving door of medevacs from Clem. Let's go to the Clem cam for a moment. Epilepsy warning. But Marines at the natural. Marines in the main. Marines at the front and Marines at the back. They're everywhere. He's in the... Loses one medevac, but able to pull back. 18 drones down and picks up out of the main and gets the vast majority of those medevacs out. So much so, Clem is still at 200 supply. Whereas Raynor struggling to defend on multiple fronts. He's got two lurker dens on the way. I don't think that's a mistake. And oh no, Clem dropped the ball on one. And the Marines will suffer for it. Ghost Academy just now started, but with no ghosts on the field, lurkers could certainly be something to stem the tide of Clem sending it across the map. Banshees joined up with this army. It's still 2-2 two, two versus 1-1. One, one. The upgrade advantage is dramatic, even against the Roaches here. And Banshees trying to slide out of the way. There's no anti-air to help. 
The Hydras are just now getting involved, trying to draw the Widowmine shots in, and Raynor will have enough biomass here to defend. But still no detection. The Spore Crawler is burrowing. But he just slides right past. He's still microing Banshees mid-fight. He could kill the drones as well. It's not over yet. The Banshees, 14 kills, 16 kills. They've done terrible, terrible damage to everything else. Those are the same Banshees that got damn close to killing the Queens. Uh or was it? Yes. And we'll try again if given the opportunity. Oh no, the Widowmine's recharged! And uh, I don't know exactly how much they killed, but based on the blood spatter there, it seems like it wasn't a, uh, a cheap sacrifice. Oh, Corrosive Bow's almost hitting multiple medevacs, but Clem will try to power through. It's concave not looking particularly good. Corrosive Bow's not landing on the mines, and he does unburrow anyways. But, oh, a mine drop coming in, and the drones literally can't run away fast enough. 11 more drones down. Rainer plummets to uh, 81, so he's doing just fine on that count. But he has to hold on to the bases to mine from. That's actually a bit more scarce. Are the upgrades done? Yes, both Lurker upgrades are complete. And with the Lurkers done, he just slices through eviscerating multiple Marauders to kick things off. And Clem, how many ghosts? Just the one. I don't think that's going to be enough against the Lurker count that Rainer's bringing to the table. He's been under attack for essentially the entirety of this game. But for now, he will halt. And if he can get some counter damage done, if he can push the issue before the ghost count reaches ridiculous numbers, well, there's a real opportunity to turn this around. But Clem, just splitting and stimming, and just, uh, he's ignoring the Lurkers, and eventually finds another scan to take him out. 3-3 three, three now done. And Rainer with a huge counterattack down the center, trying to just trade out these roaches for something a bit more valuable. But down goes the base. We don't mind taking down, but 3-3 three, three bio with plenty of medevacs behind, stutter stepping back. Roaches actually either cancel or kill one of the command centers on the other side, and Clem doesn't have so much money, he can just afford to be losing command centers while they're building. Though that may change soon, as now he's mining from his entire half of the map. I guess he got a base over on the left side. Ah, <sighs> Rainer. He stalled out the attack, but Clem is not stalling out his production. He's got a fusion core, another starport, high sec auto tracking, and building armor queued up afterwards. And it's not looking particularly good for the Italian Stallion right now, as the Frenchman is continuing his way forward. And there's a Nidus, a desperate move. There's not that many reinforcements from Clem, so there might not actually be anything to defend. And he gets the Nidus into the main, the Hail Mary move here, while the Bio Army moves forward. Trying to uh, drag Clem's attention to either side. Give him an opportunity to deal with any part of this, whether it's the production or the army itself. But this Nidus went uncontested, and now the Lurkers are entrenched in the main. And they're even, oh, don't do it. Don't do it, Clem. Oh my god. Oh no, I don't know about this. He scans. Well, hmm. I mean, well, there, well, I, 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 I don't know what's going on. It looks like he has enough, but the Lurkers are still doing terrible, terrible damage. Yeah, Clem has enough income. He grinds through. Even the Banshee is still there. All right, you know what? I think he knows what he's doing. Almost loses the rest, but with the Lurkers getting cleaned up by the bile raining down on top of them. Diving from hell, if you would, on to the lurkers to take them out. And game number one will quite comfortably go towards Clem. <sighs> well, it started off poorly. Rainer, to his credit, kept it going. The lurkers, very much uh, the right choice, I think, there. But. Clem had so much momentum built up from that early pressure. The fact he went in with the Hellions, disgusting. Effective, but disgusting. It's a gamble. It's not a huge, it's really not a huge risk, those first two Hellions and Reaper. But clearly had an effect. So that means Clem goes off to a 1-0 lead in game two. Yeah, that's how math works. All right, not that, 
What weird filler commentary. Yes, if you look at the score, you'll see the number is higher than zero. It's less than two, though, which gives us just one integer because you can't have fractions here. All right, and you can take that right, just like pressing the like button. It's either one or zero. And that, coincidentally, is the score. Okay. Clem one, zero. Rainer, tough start. Try to get the roaches. I think Clem read that perfectly. I just want to... The little details of, you're going roach warren, so you probably won't have zerglings. And even if you do, well, they probably won't have speed. So ends up getting an inordinate amount of damage off that small move and runs with it across the rest of the game. That is a thing. Uh, roach Ravager is pretty good at not dying. It's hard for the bio army to just straight up break through. But it's also one of the worst armies for attacking into more supply. The Roach Ravager is, is kind of supposed to be a hammer that you break them on. Don't do it. Oh my god, trying to bounce the queen while he attacks the creep tumor underneath. And, uh, why are you like this? It's effective. I'll tell you mentally, as a zerg, I'm one third zerg myself. Um... It is one of the most annoying things in the world that we... It, you know, in your mind, in your brain head, it's not that big a deal. All right, it's just one Reaper. How bad could it be? But mentally... Well, Creep Tumor's laid down. The Queen's quite protective of them. Reaper's still poking. Clem knows the exact timing of speed. Well, the earliest speed could be... Don't do it again. He's not going to do it again. He's got to put the fear in his heart. No. Okay, well, that's... That's just... That's just rude. And he goes for the Evo Chamber block. Doesn't nail it. I don't... Well... He's not going to get nine drone kills this time. I don't think. Yeah. Very solid micro from Rainer. Two more Hellions coming in, but Zergling speed is done, so... No, fool me once. And I won't get fooled again. Rain or not. I mean, he still kind of took some damage, but... Four drones for three Hellions now and a Reaper. My baby! Hold on. Well, uh... Yeah, there go the... That was a, a bit of an asterisk there, because losing two Creep Tumors... It's definitely a consolation prize for Clem. He knows that he didn't get enough done with the Hellions. But those creep tumors are also very annoying. All right. Nobody knows how to annoy their opponents like a Terran. The experts are being annoyed by everything and everyone. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm one third Terran myself. It's okay. Liberator. There is a spore. Centralized position, so not not gonna be able to take out the Liberator immediately. Good reaction on Rainer. Loses only one. Hellions get another creep tumor as Clem working around the edges here. Watchtower. Oh, Zerg. And whatever this thing is. The Carrick. Somehow survived. It took a Hellion hit, but didn't quite die, as technically critters have 10 HP. Fun fact, I guess. Just throwing that one out there. Just like Clem. Sieging up in the corner of the map, the Liberator will maintain its position, no matter how many select all army hotkeys are used. Which is much of what that's for. Also, just, um, in case it gets poked by a queen, just not risking it. Make sure that he has it locked in. Scan? Scan. Well, he got all the info there. Looks like the Liberator looking for something. Really? Two spores? 
I mean, I'm sure Clem, I think Clem just had the same reaction. He's like, really? Two spores? <laughs> Tries to come in, but Raynor is not dealing with it. Absolutely shutting down that angle. A double drop is headed out. Rainer, plenty of zerglings, and now an awkward moment as he sees the double drop. Does he have anything to respond? This is most of the lings. Liberator did find an angle here. The lings will come back to defend. Hellion's working in towards the gold. This side, well, there's another base here. Why not? Double drop into the main. Liberator found an angle. Widow mine? Oh my. Ooh, gets a big hit. Liberator will be taken out, but six drones down. Hellions were also thrown back. So overall, Rainer taking some decent damage, but able to mitigate the vast majority of the threats. Liberator and Hellions are dead, leaving Clem with only his most favoritist units. Medivacs, Marines, and Widowmines. 1-1. One, one. The armory not done quite uh, in time to start the 2-2 upgrades, so Raynor will be able to catch up a bit as time goes on here. But still, a slight upgrade advantage for Clem. He's going to have a window, including right now, with those extra upgrades. So no combat shield done yet. Queens. Oh, Transfuse at the last moment. Tank of the hit. Susan, stand right there. What do you mean, stand? Oh my god. I The Banelings, and, ooh, did, like, that doesn't even register. That's not supposed to happen. The Banelings roll in and are able to take out a bunch of the Marines. Marines in the main doing a little better as they assassinate a couple Queens. Three more racks on the way, but Clem not nearly as, uh, he's not in nearly as strong a position as the previous match. Still looking good. But against this level of economy in Ling Bane, definitely not the kill potential that he had uh, in game one. Now Lings and Banes from both sides gonna trade. Tight. Ooh, the Widow Mines! Well, they're dealt with, but at what cost? The Spore Crawlers have repositioned and almost take out the Metavacs as well. Multiple Metavacs! He's trying to exploit where the Spore. You know what? Maybe Raider had the right idea with those two Spores right off the bat as Clem trying to drop with two sets of Metavacs in the same base. <sighs> but wait, there's more. Doing his best Diamond Terran impression. Sending, it's far too scary to walk across. Okay. There's Zerglings out there. Instead, every single unit will be dropped via Metavac. Gonna try to get something done with the Widow Mines. Oh my god. Well, that one is definitely what I would classify as something. And all of the Banelings are taken out, and Banelings are absolutely required to deal with Clem's Marines. Target fires good. Takes one out. The Queens are the ones left over. And there's just enough of them. And the Banelings... Oof. Crashing in now, but these Widow Mines are recharging at an incredibly inopportune time. Clem, he doesn't retarget, thankfully for him, but a little bit late on dealing with the mines. And that means now Renner has lost 130 Zerglings. Honestly, I thought the number would be higher. Lurker down on the way. 2 2 will actually be ahead for Rainer here, though. Despite the losses, his economy has been going. Amazing. He's had the gold base for quite a while. He's had a huge amount of drones. Oh my god. Well, which means he can afford to lose an inordinate amount of Zerglings and Banelings to the mines. Clem is standing his ground and the Baneling count wasn't high enough to really intimidate him. Still working in the center of the map simultaneously. Both players working their way through. Uh, Rainer at a casual 1000 APM. Clem? Mm, slacking at only 400. But Rainer with the Baneling Mines! A little off the, the scan actually activates him for him. The Widow Mines will burrow. One? No. None activate in time. There's still more mines in the center. Not again. Not this again. Oh no. On this map, we had one of the most mind-shatteringly um, 
ridiculous games, mind shatteringly even, where Clem essentially ended up making Mass Widow mine, and that was it. And Raynor lost like a thousand Zerglings in 15 minutes and won the game, but lost at least my sanity as Clem's army at some point was like 23 Widow Mines and 12 Marines and four medevacs. But Raynor just didn't have the detection. So he just kept running over him. It's shaping up to be not dissimilar. But, oh my God, the mines, a huge valley across the front line and so much so that the Marines are able to turn the fight around. 2-2 two -two is now done. The upgrade advantage has uh, dissipated here. Even though Raynor was able to get his hive, he's going to have 3-3 three, three quicker. He's building in fasters, which is a big move for him before 15 minutes. It appears he does want to be able to compete with this, especially as we go into the later game. Now, uh, some Baneling mines loaded up. Those ones have to be manually activated, but he has the APM for it. Don't you worry. And down goes a huge group of Marines and shuts down that drop attempt before it can be started. Baneling mines scattered throughout the field. Rainer waiting and watching. Well, actually just reacting to it. Technically, you can put Baneling mines on autocast, but then they will unburrow. Um... It's a very odd thing. They will unburrow uh, the first unit that comes across, which usually is a Marauder or a Widow Mine, which sounds good, but practically um, doesn't really work. And that is why Baneling Mines are never used uh, in automatic mode, because such low APM automatic mode sort of mines are for the Terrans. Wi oh, observers, EMP, but you're a little late. Actually, off the mark. Oh, no, he didn't wait until the army was engaged and loses one of the infestors. And that means enough of the, the Marines, more than enough of the Marines, and all the medevacs will survive. And now he needs the... Oh, my God. A big hit. Isn't it enough to turn it around? Clem down to 160 supply. The Bane Mines... A bit of a ham-fisted attempt at them, but an effective one. As he just finds an opportunity. The bait links underneath, and he crashes through with the Hydraling Bane. 3-3 three, three now done, as Raynor just leaning on Clem, and he has to watch his step, because there might be banelings underneath. More Nidus in towards the main. Just whatever he could do to keep Clem busy while he, he winds up for another attack. Look at Raynor's money. His losses don't matter. He's lost 3,000 more minerals. It was probably a lot more before that previous fight. Uh, at least in the disparity. But he can mine much more than that. And when Clem loses this planetary, the same... Well, it's going to continue to be true. And now a fungal from the north side gets absolutely everything. Another mine takes down a medevac with it. Mules will drop, but to mine from where? The failing come in and take out the mules before they can return even a single trip. And the Hydras. Well, the ghost might be able to stop the bleeding. Uh, but it appears at least one leg is gone. The Widow Mine's on the way out. As the detection was, uh, I think led the charge and did not find its way out. How many overseers dead? Only three, which seems... Okay, what? Oh, there was a Nidus. Clem looks across at his economy. He's down 80, 90 supply. Rainer takes the hits and returns them uh, with great vengeance. What a game. It's been quite a while since I've seen Baneling Mines used use to such an effect. But it was beautifully done. And I can't but well... So, which way do we want to go with it? All right, are Baneling Mines are are Baneling Mines OP, or do Terrans need to build a Raven? Okay, what's it gonna be? I'm excited to find out today on uh, Backseat Grandmas. I mean, <clears throat> like and subscribe. Honestly, though, Clem seemed a bit taken aback. Usually, if you ever see it, you see one. 
and then the Terrans will scan religiously. But Raynor was placing the Burrowbanes mid-fight. He was doing it while everything else was happening. And that, he masked it well enough, because it's almost impossible unless you're watching obscenely closely to notice two or three Banelings burrowing. I don't know what method he used. Maybe hotkey them beforehand, make sure they're set. Or just, you know, uh, when you have the opportunity. But he sells it perfectly. And while they weren't the killing blow, I think they certainly hamstrung Clem well enough. And, and the most important one, I think, was, was when he hit the Marines on the drop to the north. Slowing Clem's momentum, his trademark move, what he always does, is stress your multitasking to the point you start losing bases. You start losing economy. Uh, like he did with the drop to the south. But as soon as Rainer was able to just shut down a drop like that, well, suddenly the momentum started shifting. Well done. And also, yeah, Rainer doesn't really get tilted. From what I hear as well, that's going to be important. As Rainer plans on once again this year, trying his hand at GSL in Korea. Um, did not have a stellar performance the first attempt um, where he actually despite being a favorite man lost two sets in a row and went out in the first round actually i'm not sure if it was two sets in a row but i know it was the first round which when you effectively move to korea because gsl has played over uh about a month so you essentially have to temporarily move to korea which is the reason why other players have chosen not to do so in the past like Cyril. um to do that, plan for playing in a tournament for a month, and then to go out on day one. Well, that is certainly, um, not ideal. What is ideal is also picking off that Reaper. That feels so nice. But yeah, so, going to be giving it another shot. Think, um, just unprepared for, uh, I believe it was a, a, a group with two Terrans who were very ready what Rainer was bringing to the table. I'm remembering poorly now. Um, stop commenting on how bad your memory is, Winter. All right, this is not good content. Moving on. And then a lair on the way. What is this madman doing? Is it? Like, why is the lair done? Mutas? In this economy? Well, Rainer breaking out all the old school strats. Mainling mines and now mutalisks. The roaches didn't cut it. But muta is definitely an unknown quantity. The reason they're not commonly used is because they're made out of paper mache. Um, they die to everything, including emotional damage. A couple little mines, a handful of marines. Uh, maybe we'll even see a Thor if time goes on long enough, but the big risk is if you stray too far into those things. But if you do have 600 APM, it becomes a bit more realistic controlling the mutas in an effective manner. A bit. Even then, it's kind of rare to see. Well, the double gas will be spotted. The, the Hellions are trying to get through, but the Zerglings are in place to deal with it. Well, if, if Clem didn't figure it out from the double gas, he now sees the Spire, so... That's a bit of a giveaway. The Liberator just gonna deny as much mining as possible, not bothering to unsiege it when it's likely gonna die to Queens anyways. The Hellions roasting the hatchery, actually doing a pretty sizable amount of damage, but the Mutas are about to pop out. And now we see how Clem deals with it. He's building turrets. The best defense against Mutas is a good offense. The Zerglings are ready for a surround here, but the Hellions still get in. Gonna get a few more kills. Raynor only has 41 drones. This is two base Muta effectively. He took a third hatch, but he did not have the drone count to really use it. So Clem is on three CC, 56 SCVs. 
is there a baneling nest for Rainer? No, he's getting plus one flyer, which indicates he wants to play. This is not like some sort of muta all in, which is almost like uh, a redundant, like doesn't even make sense, but well, the Zerglings, you don't really want to let the Zerglings in your house. Historically not, oh no. Well, that's that's not how you control mutas. I mean, maybe it is? No, it's clearly not super intentional as you don't want to bleed out two, three mutas in a mediocre fight. Well, any amount of mutas lost early is absolutely devastating. And unfortunately, a single widow mine and another mine. Well, I didn't even see that one. Rainer was already pretending like that was it. And then another mine slams the point home. And suddenly, just like that, five mutas are dead. There's no Baneling Nest. There's, uh... Well, but if, but if he gets that depot... Did the depot burn? No, it's being repaired. No. Hmm. He saw the... I think he saw the mine. He definitely saw the mine. Uh... Well, some more mutas on the way. Rainer, very active, watching, but will he have enough? He just started a baneling nest. I can't help but think that's, that he assumed he had one already. Because dealing with this without banelings. Um, mutas are pretty good as a fighting unit, as long as there's no splash damage involved. You need some cover from the zerglings, but they can get the damage done. But Marines are unequaled in efficiency. Huh, plus two flyer on the way. Clem being very careful about it. The big risk against Mutas is getting caught uh, with half your army and just isolated and killed. Mutas so good at picking them off. Uh, so Clem is clearly kind of covering himself with his armies here. He has one up to the north. He's got this attack down the center. They could join up if needed. Kind of conspicuously, yeah, conspicuously. No, wow, that was more wrong, but more fun too. I don't, <clears throat> kind of. That there's no overseer. Okay, he's, he's just now building an overseer, which seems like a bit of an oversight, as well, uh, considering how many mines are on the field. Baneling speed is halfway done. Mutas will pick off one of the mines. Another attack to the north. Gonna try to drag the mines in. The Zerglings are hit hard, and now the Mutas are softened up as well. Plus one melee is done, but the Marines are stimming forward, and the damage output is redonkulous. He just targets the hatch, targets the Banes, the Mutas, the Banelings. You can, and meanwhile, the Marines killed the hatchery to the north. Yes, the Mutas will survive and clean up the Marines, but Rainer just lost his fourth hatch. And, well, he lost both fourth hatches. So he's down to three is the summary here. 14 Mutas have died. And Clem's momentum has not been slowed by any means. He, his, he delayed his third base slightly. That was the biggest delay of anything thus far. And Mutas... Well, they're going to try to pick off some of the Marines at the back. Thankfully, 2-2 two -two isn't done yet. And plus two flyer attack is about to complete, which makes it a little bit easier to pick off those Widowmines. Well, trying to... He gets it in time. The Mutas are on the opposite side of the map, though, which means during this fight, does Raynor have enough units to actually deal with the Marines? And if the Banelings connect, which you know, um, so that's a no then. <laughs> the Mutas uh, kill 10 SCVs, but won't get the base. And another base targeted. The Marines are too much. And uh, despite the Mutalisks, Clem is able to power through. Not a great start. Losing a couple mutas for almost free. And even though it got a little better from there, it it just wasn't enough at the end of the day. 
and Clem on oh, match point now. I think I had to kind of revert to an old school style and, and play a lot less aggressively because that is what the Mutas are so good at dealing with, is, is picking off small amounts of units as they go outside the base. But at the end of the day, Clem is able to hold on. I was excited to see it, but it does feel like the age of the Muta has ended. Um, at least in the current balance and current meta. As unlike in, in Wings of Liberty and in Heart of the Swarm, the economy starts so high. The Muta would come out, especially if you were rushing Mutas, it would come out probably around the time, like, once again, remember, this is a Zerg on two base, probably. And a Terran trying to take a second. So the Muta would come out by the time the Terran was establishing their second base. Unlikely to have medevacs. Um, Stim takes quite a while as well uh, to come online. There's just not going to be that much opportunity to move out. But in Legacy of the Void, which, by the way, year nine of Legacy of the Void. So if you're thinking about Baneling Mines or Mutas, Wings of Liberty, you're thinking about the distant past. So, um, if you remember installing StarCraft 2 with your CD-ROM drive, well, how's the retirement fund? Like and subscribe. Um, <clears throat> well, the point being that both of these players, not too much older than StarCraft 2 itself, uh, and while they probably played Wings of Liberty, not professionally. Anyways, so Muta's a lot more effective when, one, in Wings of Liberty, Widowmind didn't exist. And the world was better for it. But, uh, and, and the economies were much lower, so rushing to tech had a much greater effect, while still being a massive risk. But generally, especially since Zerg didn't have uh, the Lurker, the Viper... Uh, too many options like that. Late game did involve a lot of lair tech, but that was the... Eh, mixed old days. This is all rolling around to say the Mutas, a bold move, but clearly have some uh, weaknesses, which are fighting it all. <laughs> Here we have the Hellions with the Reaper. You know how dangerous they can be so far. Queens. Brenda Bounce. It's gonna be a Liberator this time around. A couple more barracks. Are those barracks 4 and 5? Indeed they are. Full production coming online. Stim pack. On the way. Oh, really? Wow. Hmm. No. I'm Benjamin! I... He's just killing the queens. You're not allowed to do that. And the Liberator... Well, the other queens... I, oh, my God. He kills three queens. All right. Eight, four queens so far. Half a King Henry. I don't... Well... Clem just fights, and he tries to distract for the Liberator, but uh, Raynor was on top of that. He had the Spore Crawler in position, shut it down. Honestly! And we saw this with Cyril versus Clem. The brave and glorious sacrifice of the Queens, instead of the drones. Because at the end of the day, the Queens do not cost Larva. They're really not that expensive on minerals. So, if you can distract and trade queens, as opposed to drones, or slowing your economy, well, that's usually better. Even if emotionally and physically painful. So, I think it is a, a calculated move. Even though I doubt Raynor was planning to lose four queens there, to be, uh, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now we're on Solar's map, so the largest map in the pool 
It feels like it. I don't know if that's true, but it feels true. Reg set station is probably larger, but it, it's it, it's a completely different mouthfeel. So, of the standard maps, which are most, but of the more standard layout, this is by far the largest. Has our, our longest games, the most bases, and already clearly apparent as Clem has three going on four command centers. Rainer has five hatcheries with more coming online. In fact, he has a macro hatch at his third. So, all coming together here for both sides. Creep spread's already halfway across the map. So, one one is on the way. Uh, Clem's gonna have 30, 45 second advantage, maybe. Is there an armory done? Indeed there is. So we can start 2-2 two, two immediately. Second factory, done as well. So, drilling claws. Momentarily. There, yep. Yeah. <laughs> one, one done. Plus two weapons begins immediately for Clem. Bane link speed is not quite completed yet, which means Clem might have an opportunity. Like, just a few seconds between Baneling Speed and 1-1. But Clem uses it to cut down dozens of Banes, but the rest pop out with a vengeance. And Clem driven back, losing a bunch of the Marines. Bit short-circuited there. Infestation Pit Hydra Den definitely tells you the trajectory that Raynor wants to go as well. Both being produced in the main. Marines still working that northern angle. Rainer working on the creep spread across the map. We don't mind. Dragged out. Takes a Marine with it. Counterattack of Zerglings. Not gonna find much. Intercepted by another drop out of Clem. As both players scramble uh, to either side of the map looking for opportunities. Drilling Claw's about to complete, making those Widow Mines even more of a menace to deal with. Rainer knows. Sends out the sacrifice. I mean, a, a Zergling. Grab your emotional support, Zerglings. Banelings rolling through, not finding much. The Queen's actually filtering them, making it that much easier. Glad just the Banelings are gone! And the Marines are stemming through! And just like that, Clem finds an advantage. Cuts through the lings and banes. The queens can't stop him, and the hatchery is dead. A medevac is taken out on the way out, but guess what? Wait, there's more! Takes out a base. No cancel out of Rainer, who's now down. 40 supply. Hydra, ling, bane, the widow mines. He actually unburrows to avoid melting his own marines. But the bane ling's gonna do their part. Rainer's holding on. He still has that fourth base, but he lost his fifth and his sixth. He has 90 drones, but he doesn't have a hive done yet. 2-2 two -two is about to be completed for Clem. Does he have a ghost academy? No. Well, now. But I, I, he's thinking about the late game, clearly. Great minds. Um, and minds. Concussive shells on the way uh, as Clem is filling in that strong late game army composition. Rainer is working on hive tech, but he has to survive to use it. And right now, that's looking difficult, as he's down 30 supply against marines, medevacs, and mines. And he's struggling to keep the upgrades intact. We'll crash through the- where did those banelings come from? They almost catch Glim off guard, but he's able to load up into the medevacs. Oh no, the evolution chamber. Plus two melee is denied at the natural of all places. Tries to upgrade on the other evo chamber. He just takes it out. One marine, one marauder taken, but the rest of the units get out of the full medevac. They'll expect some of us in the wreckage brothers. Clem just doesn't know where to expect. I mean, he's just taking his side of the map, keeping the pressure on. Rainer has managed to retake the center base, but it's a struggle to hold it. The Marauder's out in front to try to take the Baneling shots. The Hydra's whoa, 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 caught. Trying to drag the mines in. Actually gets a hit over the Metavax there. And Overseer's with him in case of mine, but just stutter stepping, taking a Baneling or two on the way back. And give it that much harder. Guns down the Changelings instantaneously. And Clem. Incessant. 
He won't stop. He's just absolutely tearing through everything off of Creep. Rainer needs to find an angle. The Widowmind splits a little. The Banelings aren't closing the distance quite yet. Now he's on the Creep, but the Marines, they're able to load up into the Benefacts, at least the vast majority. And now he's back into the natural. Clem took out the Creep on this angle and, and has constantly been using it. The lack of vision, what he doesn't know, can certainly hurt him. And Clem proving that point. The Marines quartered and cut down, but the damage was he killed the natural. He just keeps working his way through. Rainer, continued production. He's still, he has a Nidus. He's got Lurkers on the way. Plus three. Clem didn't actually start his 3-3 upgrade. He's only got plus three weapons. So he's not going to have that decisive upgrade advantage. But remember, he did take out the Evo Chambers. So it's not like Rainer's catching up anytime soon. In fact, does Rainer even have any Evo Chambers? He does somewhere, but is clearly strapped for minerals and gas to produce anything at the moment, as Clem just keeps so much pressure on. Anitis at the back of Clem's base. Some Hellbats being mixed in. I'm not 100% sure that's intentional. The SCVs are pulled, but Clem was maxed out, so he didn't have very many units producing, which means the Nidus might be able to get into the main, and the Lurkers are popping out. Yeah, Widowmine will hit, but the Lurkers will slice through the rest. It may actually kill the Widowmines incidentally as well. And now Clem, you can see, he just pulls back entirely off the map. The SCVs, wow, a single Lurker Nidus. Don't do it. I mean, he did this last time, and it kind of worked. But I don't think this is really the same scenario here. And now the Hydra Ling is into the third. In that scenario, Raynor had nothing. He didn't have the economy to fall back on. When, when Clem made it rain men all over the lurkers, it, it made sense. But now with the Tactinitis, Raynor's... No the lurkers are coming in, and there's not enough ghosts. The lurkers are that splash damage at range. Finally, something that can directly deal with the Marines and the Marauders here. And now the Orbital. The Ghost get a single snipe, but Clem is pushed back. Rainer has done an incredible job of holding on, and now he's fighting back. Another Knight is into the main. The Lurkers can eventually be cleaned up, but Rainer is using this advantage for all it's worth. He's taken those two bases back. He's got 88 drones and is building more. He's got a full economy and Clem, well, he's not doing so bad himself. He's, he's got these bases over to the right flank, but Rainer has pushed him back over to the east side of the map. And now, well, the creep, there's creep here. All the way up towards Clem's natural. But the Widowmines thin out the Lings and Banes and leave mostly Hydras behind. There's really no detection there. The Knight is just for a distraction. Gonna be dealt with. The Lurkers, uh, a, a flank attempt. The Lurkers absolutely eviscerating the Terran army, but eventually will be cleaned up and the Widowmines are recharging. Another round of Lurkers. Eight more Lurkers on the way. God, here they go again. A brutal game. We're only 15 minutes in, 22,000 losses. Oh, almost 50,000 resources lost so far. And there's plenty more to go, as they both maintain so many bases. Stealing through. Overseer is done. Very important. I don't know, there is no ghost cloak, but the mines are still an existential threat. The Zerglings into the main. They don't have adrenal glands, and they only have plus one attack, so they won't be able to rip apart the infrastructure as much as they'd like. But at least he drags the attention of Clem back. And now the Lurkers are headed in towards the front, slicing through on through the bubula there. The speed zone. Actually, that's a dubula. Get your terms right, Winter. I don't... Is there burrow done? No burrow. So not able to burrow banes, infestors. Lurkers get it built in. It's a, it's a stock feature, but the Lurker spread is good, but the, the Terran spread isn't too bad itself. The ghost goes down, the mines are holding the line, but the Lurkers are starting to slice through everywhere else. And now more SCVs will die. The Lurkers find the opportunity. My god. 
And you just hear lurkers are across the entirety of the screen and then some. Clem trying to move into position to deal with it. He's still maxed out. So he's done a good job. Well, he, he had a, still a lot of mining during this up until this moment as the Banelings crash through. A big counterattack simultaneously taking out one of Raynor's hatcheries. Just a bio there, but Raynor has everything concentrated. Clem will hold for now. The ghosts kind of abandoned. More lurkers on top of the planetary. Raynor is slowly but surely slicing down the planetary fortresses. And Clem is running out of bases to mine from. Raynor has two fully mining bases. Clem down to one, really. Though he's able to land at that northern side. But the fact he's still maxed out. That is the one big asterisk here. As Clem has 148 soon to be fully upgraded Terran army supply. 13 medevacs, which is a bit much, but. <laughs> Rainer? I mean, it can't even get close to that with 90 drones. But he has the economy. It's actually Clem who has more of a bank. The Lurkers, on their own, are not going to be enough. The Widow Mines will burrow, take out a big group of the Zerglings. Haven't seen Banelings for quite a bit. All the gas being sunk. Oh, there's a few. All the gas being sunk into Lurkers here, and even a few Infestors. But he doesn't have Burrow. I think he's about to start Burrow, realizing. Oh, but the Metavax to the north side. Another dozen drones and a hatchery taken down. Zergling splitting across. 2-2 two -two is on the way. Both flavors here for Rainer. Or attack upgrades, rather. No burrow for the infestors is a conspicuous lack. And now the infestors themselves caught. A fungal might be enough to help the lurkers escape. But it looked... Like Raider was turning it around, but Clem has had so much army supply. Those upgrades. The upgrades that Clem was able to deny at length, I think, are really showing here. As even the, uh, the lurkers struggling to get the kills. And Raynor wasn't able to limit Clem's economy enough. And now he has a maxed out... It's been a perpetually maxed out turn. The army supply. At no point has Raynor had more army supply. Even when he was actively killing those... How many orbitals are out there? Only five. Which is relatively low for this stage of the game. But the Widow Mines. Another Nidus into the main. Bit of a desperation move. But he's able to take out another orbital. Raynor is mining somewhat comfortably from the southern side. Clem scans it as well. This bio ball is rolling through, though. The Nidus... The Vikings! Landed Vikings! Kill the Nidus in time, two of them? Well, today I learned, I guess. Widow Mines have recharged yet again. The bio army is pre-splitting. Clem has taken the base to the north. And Raynor has to decide. Well, he has some lurkers back at home. He wants to do something resembling a base trade. He just started Burrow. Ah, that, that certainly isn't the ideal Burrow timing. Splitting off a few Zerglings, but most of the bio army is here. Can keep the mines from triggering. A uh, Fungal catches more units to the north. Widowmon slamming the point home. Well, the lurkers will burrow. Oh my. A split and stim. Is able to pick up over the top, but the hydras are there. Cleans it up. That base to the north. Rainer has been able to do so much. But Clem just has maintained the army. He's had the he never took a, a particularly bad fight into the lurkers. Without the infestors to hold him down, there's nothing to knock him out. And the bio ball just rolls over the hatchery. Zerglings in the main. Thinned out. Few burrowed. The baneling count is not nearly high enough. The infestors are coming in from the back. But the timing is off. The fungals are there. But there's no banelings. It's not enough. Clem absolutely tearing through it. Another brutal game.
Rainer losing 900 Zerglings, 55,000 resources. But Clem is able to hold the line, even though he redrew it a few dozen times. <sighs> An exhausting series, but I think one worthy of these two yet again. Clem comes out on top three to one, but I, I, I think it certainly made my day a little bit better. Hopefully it made yours as well. Thank you for watching. If you got the means and motivation, be awesome to check out Patreon. Um, but I hear liking and subscribing is free. Uh, at least for now. Um, make sure to check out the second channel in the description, which right after that, like and subscribe for, for games that you might someday uh, care about watching. Uh, more content streams, all that. Otherwise, uh, check the recommended for your next video if you're looking to waste i mean enjoy more time otherwise i'll see you next time thank you for watching good luck have fun stay tuned